गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस एम ऑडिबल ओके इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अ फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल वेयर वी हैव सीन सो मेनी बेसिक डेफिनेशंस एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन आईटी एंड ओटी एंड आईओटी देन वी हैव सीन सम यूज केसेस दैट इज नथिंग बट uh examples where we have uh, uh, applying uh, iot then we have seen architectures okay two architectures we have seen one m2m and uh, iot wf then also we have seen simplified architecture and expanded the architecture okay after expanding that simplified architecture hmm. then we have seen uh, separate uh, uh, stack that is a uh, core iot network uh, functionalities uh, uh, stack Uh, with the three layers then uh, again we have seen uh, again one more stack which is uh, iot data management and uh, compute stack with again three uh, layers so this all things uh, i i discussed in first module and i also told you to do some uh, assignments uh, it is not any restriction for you i am not putting any conditions and restrictions on you whatever the topic you want to choose you choose it and you write uh, Uh, t- uh, case study you want i want you to make a case study uh, uh, and write just one or two pages of uh, some uh, documentation for that particular uh, field or topic okay so you only choose on yourself and you write uh, anything about uh, uh, this iot where exactly you are applying you know, it may be uh, the generation of uh, iot or uh, evolution of uh, internet and um, it may be any other uh, Uh, examples uh, because in uh, first module i discussed only four examples you can write uh, some more examples and uh, you can uh, write about uh, uh, the real time applications where exactly we are using so but that to- that topic should be related to the topics covered in the first module okay so you write on your own and uh, uh, by next uh, monday uh, you submit me that assignment by mail okay uh, today today uh, we will uh, to go to second module that is a uh, uh, smart objects okay so in this entire module we, we are going to see about smart objects so here um, before going to start this uh, just uh, let us go to some introduction part of this module uh, even uh, we may skip this uh, introduction but uh, uh, nothing is there actually but uh, sometimes they may ask you some uh, basic definitions from this introduction part also so i want to tell you this also so first topic of this module is uh, the things in iot it means just a brief introduction they have given here uh, from next topic onwards so actual uh, our uh, syllabus will start here so in this uh, things already i discussed about these things what you, what are these things and all those things okay so here the things the devices or the what type of sensors we use in iot so these all things we are going to study in this module okay suppose if you consider a vehicle it may be car or any other vehicle and uh, uh, if that car or vehicle is iot enabled and uh, car is connected to internet car is connected to internet means the devices which are present in that car those devices are connected to internet so for example already we have uh, discussed one uh, uh, example uh, related to this one in the first module uh, that is a roadway connected roadway right so the, there uh, we have seen some uh, traffic and uh, in that uh, junction uh, some uh, four roads are uh, connecting there so to er- to avoid that uh, collisions uh, uh, one vehicle is uh, communicating with another vehicle and uh, those vehicles may be driver uh, uh, vehicles or driver less vehicles so if you consider this one that car has uh, so many number of sensors correct so just now i told you that car has so many number of sensors and what are those sensors are doing those sensors are providing us a huge amount of data okay they are generating huge amount of data that data can be consumed or used by variety of other systems variety of other systems in a intelligent manner it means that they are best using that uh, data what is generated by that car okay so then that data is intelligent manner in a intelligent way it is used by some other systems and uh, not only systems they are used by some other services also 
on car itself as well as that data is shared with the other vehicles also for communicating purpose so then from behind this steering wheel so just when you look into the driving seat you will see a dashboard and you will see one steering so behind this steering so many things are happening in the portion of engine so that information will be also everything will be displayed in our dashboard so how this information is coming to this dashboard and how we are going to get it because manually we are not going inside that engine and we are not going to uh, check the temperature of engine and the heat of engine nothing so everything is maintained or uh, everything is uh, tested by the sensors okay from behind this steering wheel almost everything in the car can be checked or sensed and controlled right so this is because of the sensors and the car is filled with the so many number of sensors of all different different types so different different types of sensors means uh, which type of sensors uh, the sensor may be temperature the sensor may be used for measuring the temperature so temperature sensor and it may be gps okay to find out a location of that car where exactly it is presently moving and pressure pressure may be tire pressure or air pressure or in engine also so many other parts are there to measure those pressures and velocity or speed speed of that car these all are sensors that are meant to improve the safety so these all are uh, present or they, these all are exist uh, these all sensors exist there for providing or improving the safety of a uh, passenger okay so safety purpose and simplify the vehicle maintenance so vehicle maintenance to uh, make it a uh, com uh, simple instead of a complex the vehicle maintenance to make the simplify it uh, we can use these all sensors and uh, enhance the driving experience also it means uh, uh, it will be bore to drive the car if we don't have uh, so many other sensors like uh, uh, back uh, uh, reverse gear uh, cameras and so many other things to make uh, the safety and to make the vehicle and maintenance simply uh, simplified or simple and then enhance the driver experience we will use these all sensors right so such sensors are basic fundamental blocks or fundamental building blocks of these all iot networks so the major contribution in our iot network is nothing but these sensors only and in fact these all sensors are foundational elements found in our uh, uh, found in the smart objects so these smart objects is nothing but they are the things in the internet of things so here till today whatever i was telling about devices the things uh, or devices connected into the internet uh, in iot in iot network what all the devices we are using usually i call them as things so now onwards what we are going to call them as a smart objects we are going to call them as a smart objects so once uh, they have asked the definition of a smart object in your question paper so because of that only i am explaining you this all uh, introduction part okay so smart objects definition here i have given the smart objects are are, are are physical objects it means they are some physical devices they are any physical objects okay any physical objects may be it may be your uh, vehicle it may be the gate of your uh, compound it may be the door of your house okay it may be the window of your uh, uh, window of your house it may be the uh, any electric uh, device of your house so anything any physical object any physical object is a smart object when we can call it as a smart if and only if if and only if if those objects have embedded technology they have a technology it means inside those objects some technology is embedded or inserted or developed and why these technology is embedded in those objects because to sense the to sense the environment in which environment they are working these things or these sensors or these objects in which environment they are working they should understand first okay so in which environment i am working and also they should interact with that environment they should interact with that environment is nothing but whatever the data they generate they have to submit it they have to transmit that data to somebody else in that environment it is just like a, a working environment in any organization and you are not alone there to work you, along with you there are so many other people are there to whom with whom you have to uh, cooperate and you should have a cooperation then you have to 
interact so then only it will be a very friendly and healthy environment to work similarly here also the objects should have a technology inside them and they should interact with the environment by understanding and by knowing that environment clearly okay in a meaningful way by being interconnected and enabling communication among themselves or an external agent it means that they, these all objects should communicate with the environment is nothing but these all objects should communicate among themselves it means they should communicate with each other as well as some any other external agent also it has to communicate they have to communicate so this is about the definition of smart object they may ask you what is a uh, smart what is a smart object smart objects are uh, physical objects that are embedded with some technology and that technology why it is using to sense the environment and to interact with that environment in which these objects are working okay so in order they have to interact with this environment in a meaningful way by being interconnected and enabling the communication among themselves and the external agent okay so in this topic in this chapter mainly we are going to analyze these smart objects okay what are these smart object how they work how they behave what are the properties of these smart objects okay these all things we are going to analyze here in this chapter and also we are going to see their architecture also architecture of these smart objects and also what we are going to do is we are going to understand their design limitations so how they have designed how they have developed and what all the problems the developers faced during the design so these are nothing but the limitations which are related to design of these smart objects and we are also going to see the role within iot networks what is the purpose what is the use what are the roles of these all objects smart objects in our iot network so these all things we are going to discuss in this chapter particularly if you want to highlight we are going to uh, study these two topics here so the sensors actuators and smart objects so these three things we will study here sensors actuators and smart objects so this section is going to define what what are sensors and different types of uh, sensor categories and uh, different types of sensors and actuators and smart objects and um, this topic also gives us how these all sensors actuators and the smart objects are the foundational building blocks of a network so why sir we should call them as a foundational building blocks how how these actuators sensors and smart objects are a foundational building blocks of any iot network so then one more next topic what we discuss is a sensor networks see it name itself is a network of sensors it means huge number of sensors are there and they are connected interconnected for a transmission of uh, data whatever they are generating so these type of networks are a sensor networks in this uh, topic uh, we are going to cover design drivers for adoption so it means that it means we are going to focus on a design of these networks okay design of sensor networks and drivers for adoption drivers for adoption means what it is again nothing but so what makes it uh, makes us to adopt these in sensor networks it means that so what is the motivation uh, to adopt this network what is the challenges were there and by addressing those challenges how we have started to use these sensor networks in a day to day life in a large amount of times more number of times frequently or often okay then uh, deployment of these networks okay these deployment challenges or problems when we deploy these networks or sensor networks these all things we will discuss in this module so next main topic or main module is a uh, sensors actuators and smart objects as just now i told you so in that one first one i want to first complete today that is a uh, sensors so as its name itself is a sensor so these sensors are not doing any so much in many major thing they are just sensing okay they are just sensing a sensor just senses something okay as its name itself is a sensor it just senses so more specifically more clearly if you want to tell a sensor actually what it does it measures some physical quantity okay a sensor if it may be any sensor that sensor measures any physical quantity and after measuring that physical quantity so it may be in analog or in any other form of uh, uh, data so what this sensor will do 
it converts that measurement reading or that reading into digital representation it means it also performs a digitization it measures the physical quantity and it digitizes that physical quantity okay or measurement reading of that physical quantity it will convert it into digital representation so this is also very important what exactly the sensor and what it does so here that digital representation whatever it has generated whatever it has converted then that data that digital representation will be forwarded to another device another device sir why it will forward to another device why it is not keeping itself so that device uh, whatever it has received that data that will be uh, what it is going to do is with that data is for transformation into useful data it means whatever the digitization digital representation of that physical quantity that device has received that data is very much important for that device for some other purpose or some other useful purpose so that data will be used in a useful manner so that data will be converted into a, that is nothing but transformation into a useful data it means that data will be converted into information useful information and that information or data can be consumed or used by some intelligent devices or human beings so that data may be used by human beings also or else again that data or information can be used by some other devices in in intelligent manner okay so these are about the sensors and if we consider ourselves as a human beings human beings have five senses correct so first sensor is a eye for sight for sight purpose and ears for hearing purpose and uh, our skin our skin for touch purpose and then nose for smelling purpose and tongue for taste purpose right so like this uh, we being human beings we have these five senses okay and these all five sensors will not work independently okay sometimes uh, one sense sensor is sending the information to another sensor for example whenever we get a bad smell automatically our hand will come and our hand will close our nose so how it is possible because that that sensor is sending that data or it is transmitting that data whatever it has generated to our brain okay so it means that by sensing something these sensors are making our brain it is uh, they are allowing our brain to generate some signals and to take some important decisions or to make some important decisions so brain is a very much uh, important brain uh, decision maker okay in human body i am telling okay so here human senses do not operate independently just now i told you these all five senses will not operate independently they are dependent on each other they will communicate with each other they will interact with each other okay instead they complement each other or compute together and empowering the human brain to make the intelligent decisions right so the brain is a ultimate decision maker the brain is a ultimate decision maker and it often uses several sources of a sensory input definitely so if it wants to take a decision it needs some input okay so what type of input sensory input so it uses so many things as a sources of sensory input and that one so many things are nothing but these five sensors in human body okay so sensors are not limited to human like sensory data it means that so these sensors are not uh, made only for human beings but nowadays these sensors are made for any other non living things also so the, any other devices also any other objects also when these sensors will be uh, fixed to these uh, objects uh, physical objects then those objects will be called as a smart objects okay so they can measure anything worth measuring because sensors are not limited to human beings they can measure anything worth measuring they are not only measuring the taste they are not only measuring the sight they are not only measuring the smell so they can measure anything what we can measure okay it may be any physical quantity or anything it may be temperature it may be pressure it may be velocity it may be uh, number of people occupied in a room okay so many other things are there whatever we can measure those all things can be measured by these sensors in fact they are able to provide one external extremely wide spectrum of rich and measurement of data it means they are able to generate 
huge amount of data with the greater precision data human senses so how much amount of data uh, these human sensors are generating so lot lot away from that one that multiplication of so much uh, multiplication multiplied of these sensors so these uh, devices sensor devices can sense them or measure them so it means that in front of these sensors these human sensors are very very less it means there are only five and they are just uh, generating a small amount of data but by comparing with this human sensors if you talk about these physical devices what we are using in iot these sensors will generate huge amount of data which is large or greater greater much greater than these data which are sensed or sen generated by human sensor sensors okay so here this additional dimension of or increase in this data makes this physical world entire physical world as a source of information so in the human body these five sensors are the sources of information or sources of sensors but uh, these devices you know what i am telling about sensors which are in iot these sensors are going to sense everything they are going to measure which is worth measuring what all the things can measure everything they are going to measure so what where we are going to get these all measurements obviously definitely they are present in our physical world so this physical world itself is a, a huge source of information for these all sensors so these all sensors will get this information from these uh, physical world only okay so sensors can be embedded in any physical objects that are easily connected to the internet just now i told you so in the physical objects these sensors will be fixed and these physical objects will be connected easily to the internet and sir how they are going to be connected to the internet so either wired or wireless network through wire or wireless network so because these connected physical objects with multi-dimensional sensing capabilities communicate with each other and external systems they can make intelligent decisions because since these all physical objects whatever we have connected in the internet with wire or wireless and they have a capability to sense huge amount of data and they have a capability to communicate with each other as well as they have a capability to communicate with any external systems also so what these are do, going to do is these are going to make a intelligent decisions they are going to take some important intelligent decisions okay so here we are going to keep on listing some categories of sensors what kind of sensors are there so around some six to seven categories of sensors are there in that one first category is active or passive active or passive is nothing but sensors can be grouped they can be clustered they can be uh, categorized based on these features or characteristics just remember active or passive sensors active sensors and passive sensors sir, sir which sensors we can call them as active sensors and which sensors we can call them as a passive sensor suppose there are some thousand together sensors are there and i tell you to bifurcate bifurcate them into active sensors and passive sensors how you will make a two groups here so that is about uh, this topic okay so sensors can be categorized based on whether as its name itself is telling that active or passive okay so whether they are going to generate any energy it means whether these sensors are going to give us any output and that output is any energy in terms of that energy may be power energy or it may be any other uh, mechanical energy or anything somewhat these sensors if they are producing the output in the form of any energy then whether they require any input for producing that output and if that input is any external power supply or any current or any electric if it wants then it is called as active sensors just remember if a sensors are generating any output in the form of any energy it means that they are generating any energy and if they want to generate any energy if those uh, sensors or whether they are require any input like a power supply or something then it is called as active sensors since they are taking this power supply as an input okay so it is called as active sensors or whether they simply receive the energy it means that they are not generating the output but they are receiving the input 
uh, in the form of energy okay in fact these sensors themselves only receiving the energy as an input and to receive that energy whether they require uh, any external power supply or not since they are just receiving the energy they don't want if they don't want any external power supply then it is called as a passive sensors remember the difference active sensors and passive sensors if the sensors are producing the output as energy and if they want any external power supply as input then they are active okay so then if these sensors are receiving the energy but they are not taking any external power supply as a input then it is called as a passive sensors okay so then second category is invasive and non-invasive invasive or non-invasive means here sensors can be categorized based on whether a sensor is a part of the environment it is measuring it means that suppose if i am measuring a pressure of a tire in my car and whether that sensor is present there or not if it is present there in that environment then it is called as invasive invasive okay so if or external to it to measure this one to measure something uh, that sensor is not present there but that sensor is using the help of something some external device so then it is called as non-invasive it means that if a sensor is a part of environment then it is invasive then if it is not a part of that environment then it is a non-invasive okay so these are the four categories of sensors then third category is contact or no contact sensors are also can be categorized based on whether these sensors require any physical contact with with what they are measuring for example if it is measuring the temperature of an engine or uh, temperature of engine uh, to do that if it wants a physical contact with that engine then it is a contact sensor if it does not require a physical contact with that engine then it is called as a no contact no contact sensor okay so contact or contactless or no contact sensors so similarly absolute and relative so remember just the meaning of these two absolute is nothing but independent okay absolute is nothing but independent and it is a fixed one more meaning is a fixed it is it is a static it is relative is nothing but relative is a dependent dependent on something and it is not fixed it is completely completely always movable and it is a dynamic it is okay so just to understand the meaning of this one then clearly you will understand these categories sensors can be categorized based on whether they measure on absolute scale absolute scale is nothing but any measurements which are fixed there okay so measure on an absolute scale or based on a difference with the fixed or variable reference value it is nothing but so it is not fixed it is a variable completely it is moving it is changing so based on this also we can categorize the sensors either absolute sensor or relative sensor next category is area of application in which area where you are applying the sensor in which industry you are applying whether it is suitable to that industry or what specific industry or what based on that also we can categorize that sensors and next category is how sensors measure sensor can be categorized based on the physical mechanism used to measure the sensory input so they, these are these are can be categorized the sensors can be categorized based on a physical mechanism physical mechanism what technology what mechanism you are using to measure something okay used to measure the sensory input for example the devices what you are using there that is physical mechanism thermoelectric it may be thermometer like your temperature to measure your temperature similarly it may be thermometer it may be thermoelectric uh, and electrochemical or it may be optic uh, it may be electric uh, it may be fluid mechanic uh, and photoelastic uh, so many physical mechanisms are there it, it means that these are some devices okay so these all are devices so based on that only uh, that also we can uh, make a categorization of these sensors how these sensors are measuring by using these all physical devices or mechanisms okay so then last category is what sensors measure it is very important what that sensor is going to measure based on that also we can make a categorization of sensors sensors can be categorized based on their applications applications means where you are using and what that sensor is going to measure so that also matters a lot here to categorize the sensors 
so based on the applications or what type of physical variables they are measuring what physical variables they are measuring based on that also we can categorize so total there are seven categories are there active or passive invasive or non-invasive contact or no contact absolute or relative area of application how sensors measures and what sensors measure okay so next is uh, last point is in uh, below in the next table on, in the next slide i have shown you uh, I, I will show you one table so that table is going to tell us uh, the clear categorization or different types of sensors okay sensors can be categorized based on a material okay right so on which it is going to use okay material what it is going to use or, or what it is going to measure or else the material with which that sensor is made up of that also matters here then the sensors can be categorized based on the cost also their prices okay then the based on the design formats okay design patterns based on the design of sensors and other factors also we can categorize the sensors the most useful classification or here category or taxonomy is to simply classify based on what physical phenomenon a sensor is measuring it means that here most of them we are going to give a importance to the physical phenomena what exactly it is going to measure physically so based on that only here we are going to categorize the sensors so it means that we are going to give a lot of importance to physical measurement physical quantity what it is going to measure clear so here this type of categorization is shown in this table below table i am going to show you one table what it is going to show it is going to show once again the categorize categorization or categories of sensors which are giving most importance to physical phenomena or physical quantity okay so here these all are different different types of sensors the first sensor is a sensor type is a position sensor position sensor if you read this description here it is very interesting see here the position sensor measures as its name itself it is going to measure the position of an object so what is the position of object the position measurement can be either in absolute term or else it may be in a relative term just now i told you absolute is nothing but fix whether it is fixed there or else that sensor is completely completely moving there okay so based on that only these are called as a position sensors and positions may be examples for this positions linear position angular position or multi-axis position so examples of these type of sensors are they may be potentiometer they may be inclinometer they may be proximity sensors these are some sensors or examples or this category or this type of sensor that is position sensors second sensor is occupancy and motion sensors already i told you in first model what is this occupancy occupancy sensor detects and it will find out the presence of people and animals in a surveillance area it means that it will find out whether the people are present there or animals are present there okay so it will find out so through the surveillance area it is nothing but through the camera through the light so okay through the led panel so it will find out whether the people are there animals are there employees are there in the room or not based on that it will find out the presence of people or animals and uh, similarly motion sensor what this sensor does this sensor also does the same thing it will find out the presence of people the only difference between occupancy sensor and the motion sensor is occupancy sensor find out the people only when they are in an idle state it means they are not moving from one place to another place they are just simply sitting in their seat and they are working employees okay at that time occupancy sensor is very very useful to identify the presence of people but motion if completely continuously people are keep on moving from one place to another place in a building or in a room then this motion sensor is very very helpful okay for example the devices or sensors for such kind of sensors are electric uh, electric eye and second one is radar these are the categories of sensors which are belonging to 
occupancy sensor and motion sensor then velocity and acceleration so this will measure these sensors will measure speed of motion okay speed of motion and this velocity will be again either it will be either linear or it may be angular okay indicating that how fast an object is moving along with a straight line or how fast it rotates it means that linear means how straightly how fast in a straight line it is moving and angular means it is how fast it is rotating how fast it is moving in a rotational direction and acceleration sensor measures the changes in the velocity okay examples are accelerometer gyroscope okay these all type of sensors i think you have uh, find in your mobile phone also accelerometer and gyroscope and uh, in some automobile uh, uh, automobiles also okay so then the next one is a force force definitely if i want to push somebody in which force i have for pushed that person okay so such kind of force measurement will be measured by these sensors force sensors detect whether a physical force is applied and whether the magnitude of that force is beyond the threshold there are some cutoff values are there okay so to measure to find out whether the applied force is crossed that cutoff value or it is beyond a threshold value to find out that also force sensors will be used and example of such sensors are force gauge viscometer tactile sensor tactile sensor is nothing but it is also called as touch sensors okay so this is about force sensor then a pressure sensor as its name itself is a pressure sensor they are related to force sensors only measuring the force applied by the liquid or gases here so here the force was applied by any human body or any animal or any physical other uh, thing but here the force is applied by liquids so that liquid may be any uh, dam water okay or that liquid may be any uh, any other chemical okay and uh, that uh, uh, may be force may be applied by any gas okay so to measure such kind of forces we use this pressure pressure is measured in terms of force per unit area remember force is uh, pressure is measured in terms of force per unit area and the examples for such kind of sensors are barometer and bowden gauge and piezometer so these are our sensors examples then flow flow sensors so flow sensors detect the rate of a fluid flow so in which speed in which speed the dam water is flowing in which speed the river water is flowing in which speed the uh, wave of a uh, ocean is uh, flowing okay the fluid it may be not only water it may be any other fluid or liquid so it just uh, find out the speed of a flow of that liquid okay they measure the volume they will measure volume uh, ma measure the volume or uh, they will measure the rate of liquid fluid uh, that has passed through a system in a given period of time so examples of uh, anemometer anemometer then mass flow sensor and uh, water meter so its name itself is water meter c so mass flow sensor mass it will measure mass also and mass flow is means a huge amount of flow is the rate is huge so mass flow sensor then water meter so these all are different different types of sensors still it is there list is not completed uh, acoustic acoustic means in a um, any uh, uh, this one uh, any function hall okay so there are any in auditorium acoustics so it is related to sound it is so this type of sensors acoustic sensors measure sound levels and convert that information into digital or analog digital signals or data signals say acoustic sensors are there for example microphone uh, geophone and hydrophone these all are examples for these acoustic sensors humidity sensors humidity sensor detect the humidity that is amount of water vapor in a air or a mass and humidity levels can be measured in various ways like absolute humidity relative humidity mass ratio and so on and uh, exa examples are hygrometer hygro hydro not hydro it is a hygrometer humister soil moisture sensor 
okay these all are required in uh, agriculture so then the light sensor light sensors uh, detect the presence of light visible or invisible okay so infrared sensors photo detector flame detector okay these all are light sensors then the radiation sensor radiation sensor detect radiation in the environment radiation can be sensed by scintillating scintillating or ionization detection the examples are giger muller counter okay scintillator uh, neutron detector these all are required for some scientists in a labs and a temperature sensor temperature sensor measure the amount of heat or cold that is present in a system or a body they can be broadly of two types of contact and non contact okay contact temperature sensor needs to be in a physical contact with the object okay but non contact sensors uh, do not need a physical contact as they measure temperature through some um, radiation or some convection okay see without touching the body of uh, any object also they can measure the temperature so best uh, example for this uh, uh, contact temperature sensor is our thermometer okay then the thermometer calorimeter temperature gauge these all are uh, examples for temperature sensors next uh, category is uh, chemical sensors chemical sensors measure concentration of chemicals whether it is a dilute whether it is a dilute or whether it is a concentrated so when this is subjected to a mix of chemicals chemical sensors are typically selective for a target type of chemical it means uh, if you have mixed some two or three chemicals at that time also these sensors uh, sensors are very much uh, selective because a target type of chemical if you want to, if you tell to them then only they will find out what is the concentration of that particular chemical in that mix okay for example a carbon dioxide sensor senses only carbon dioxide in fact in the air along with carbon dioxide there are so many other uh, uh, you know, these are there, right so uh, uh, gases are there air are there right so these all chemicals are there so in that air it will find out only carbon dioxide like this they are very much selective or they are, they are very much particular for a target type of chemical so examples are breathalyzer breathalyzer and olfactometer olfactometer then a smoke detector these all are examples for chemical sensors and biosensors biosensors detect various biological elements such as organisms tissues cells enzymes antibodies and the nucleic acid so examples for such kind of sensors are blood glucose biod sensors pulse oximetry and electrocardiograph these all are required in the medical field so it is called as biosensors okay so how many categories are there uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 around 13 types of sensors we have discussed along with their description and their examples okay just remember these left column position sensor Accuracy sensor and the motion sensor, velocity and acceleration sensor, force sensor, pressure sensor, flow sensor, and uh, acoustic sensor, humidity sensor, light sensor, radiation sensor, and temperature sensor. If you remember these, then automatically you can write the explanation about that or description about that. The only thing is you you need to some uh, remember some of these examples there because they are some technical word okay so these are our scientific words are here sensor names are somewhat scientific here so uh, you you need to remember some of these names but don't get confusion and don't mix them okay uh, so don't get confusion with these type of all sensors okay so then uh, sensors come in all shapes and sizes see sensors uh, there is not required there is no, there are not uh, any restrictions of uh, size and the shapes so they may be small size they may be big size and the size uh, shapes also may be different different shapes uh, as shown in the table one uh, next one uh, uh, as i already told you in this table uh, they will come in all shapes and the sizes can measure all types of physical conditions then use of these sensors in the area of uh, precision agriculture very very important uh, the use of uh, such kind of sensors in the agriculture field 
it is very very helpful to use such sensors in agriculture if you use these sensors in agriculture then it is called as a smart farming or smart agriculture because of these agriculture they are using variety of technical advances or technical sensors to improve the efficiency of your agriculture or farming and to get a lot of profit from your agriculture so this contains the use of use of gps and satellite aerial imagery for determining a field viability okay then robots for high precision planting and harvesting purpose irrigation and uh, so on there are so many activities are there agricultural activities for each and every activity there are so many other other different different types of sensors there okay to do to accomplish uh, those all activities in uh, agriculture and the real time analytics and artificial intelligence to predict the optimal crop lead uh, yield crop yield uh, it means we are we can predict the crop yield okay based on these all sensors and uh, uh, they are the data generated by these all sensors and also we can use for uh, having uh, weather information okay that is weather impacts and also we can use uh, to check uh, uh, soil quality so these all are some agricultural farming activities in every activity of farming nowadays we can use these all sensors to make a profit of it okay so then impacts or effects of these all smart agriculture are uh, those which are dealing with the sensor measurement of variety of soil characteristics so for example just you want to check a soil characteristic we can use that uh, one sensor which is called as a uh, uh, bio uh, sensor uh, biodegradable sensor okay so these include real time measurement of soil quality they will measure ph levels of that soil salinity of soil toxicity of the levels moisture moisture levels of uh, soil for irrigation planning uh, nutrient levels for fertilization planning and so on so many other activities okay all this detailed sensor data can be analyzed to provide highly valuable and actionable insight to boost the productivity and crop yield to improve the crop and to get the more profit so we can use these all uh, sensors soil sensors in uh, for uh, uh, these all activities okay see only one uh, sensor soil sensor is going to make these all activities so below i am going to show you one figure which is a uh, sensor which is called as a biodegradable sensor and it is a passive micro sensors to measure the soil passive it is it means that it is going to generate some energy and it is going to require use some uh, electric input so passive micro sensors to measure what it is going to measure it is going to measure the soil and the crop and conditions so these sensors can be planted directly in the soil they can be fixed in the soil and we can do that uh, sensors there only because in the ground these sensors can be uh, degradable so these are called as a biodegradable and if they biodegraded then they will not harm any soil or any plant in your farm remember and this sensor was created or developed by one university okay and that university name they have written on this sensor as a ndsu okay so this is a biodegradable sensor for a smart farming okay so this type of sensors we can use in our agricultural activities of day to day uh, agricultural activities to improve the crop yield and to get the more profit so in the next